Hello and welcome. We're going to talk today, just share a few minutes about the differences between virtual machines and containers. There seems to be a lot of discussion in the industry right now about these two things. And we have a great opportunity to save money and actually build more efficiencies into our data center. So let's go ahead and jump into this by talking about the construction of the hypervisor itself. So let's lay out some blocks here that we can just kind of color in and we'll make them nice and pretty. And these are the main blocks that exist within a virtual machine and we'll draw a couple applications. So let's go ahead and finish that off there. And we can start at the bottom here. Let me finish drawing here real quick. And one more where the application is going to go, right? This is the deliverable for the customer stuff. Okay, so starting at the bottom here, we have the physical host, right? This is the core server hardware. We have a host operating system and then a hypervisor. This example is a type 2. Then we run a guest operating system. The library is necessary to hook in and then the application's email. And we do that for the second application files. So what is the difference? That's a virtual machine. What is the difference to a container? Well, we still got the physical host here, so let's go ahead and copy that over. We still have a host operating system as well, so let's go ahead and copy that one over. So look at the comparison here as we go through this. So copy that over. host. But now we don't have a hypervisor or a guest OS, but we do still have some libraries, although represented here in this drawing, the libraries appear to be the same size. You know, it's all relative, right? But they do tend to be a little smaller in containers. So we're going to go ahead and drop that down, uh, the bins and libraries there. And then, of course, we deliver the application. So in this case, we deliver an email application or a file application. And quite frankly, it really doesn't matter. It's an application that's being delivered, right? The nice thing, though, about the container, let's go ahead and put in application file, whoops, files, then change that over to files, copy that down. The nice thing is here, we then also have to add in the application Docker. So Docker actually sits within the environment as well. Let's draw that here. We'll go ahead and type out Docker here. And so this represents the Docker applet that you can download and use. And there. Now this section here, let's go ahead and write out container, where the container is. So the actual container is this section here, the bins, the library, the delivery of the application and Docker. That's it. That's where the container is. Let's go ahead and point there. So just to review, we do share similar attributes between virtual machines and containers. We have physical hosts and the operating system on both of them. Although we do have in the containers themselves, and let's go ahead and just highlight the container here. This is the only section of the container itself. So you're going to have to have something running on that on that physical server anyways. But here, this is the container itself. Now that means that this becomes extremely portable. We can move this container anywhere that we want. Now when we look at this on a virtual machine, let's go ahead and focus in on the virtual machine, this is above the host operating system, the physical server. So here we still have to deal with the guest operating system, the libraries, and the hook. Although, let's go ahead and extend down, the hook there, focus there on the hypervisor itself. So the hook's into the hypervisor. So whether you're using a type 1 or type 2 hypervisor, it really doesn't matter because it requires the hypervisor technology to run that hypervisor, right? So that virtual machine. So for example, if you have a VMware environment that's running a VMware virtual machine, you cannot take that VMware virtual machine and drop it over to be managed by a KVM machine. It's a migration, not a coexistence. And that's what Docker brings to us, or these containers, one of the many benefits, but one of the primary benefits is portability. Imagine now your test and dev guys being able to develop applications on any platform and easily move them onto a virtual infrastructure. It's a great thing. 
I believe. Now, whether or not it's Docker or something else in the future, uh, this type of elimination of that hypervisor environment and being able to go directly, this is the way uh, that I believe the future is going to take us. This is more of an object-based environment.